Hello everyone and welcome to the Armchair Arm Dragger podcast. I'm Ben Herstick and I am your host. This is something I've been wanting to do for the be- since the beginning of the year this year. It's something I've had the idea of for a long time, but I've never had a chance to actually go and do it, and now I do, so here I go. I know you're going to be thinking, another wrestling podcast, really, but look, as somebody who uses Twitter a lot, sometimes 250 characters isn't enough to talk about wrestling. Um, this week, I'm going to be talking and breaking down the best of the Super Juniors tournament, ha- starting on Monday. So, cutting it close here, but do it live, why not? Um, first, I do want to say, as of right now, these will be every Sunday. I don't know exactly when I'll record them. I'm recording this on Sunday, so long night ahead of me, again. Yay. <laughs> but that's the plan. So, every Sunday, once I go back to school for the second half of my senior year, I don't know how these will come out. Usually we have newspaper meetings on Sundays, so I'll wait and see how that works and see how I can work around that. Maybe record it earlier and upload it on Sunday. I'm not sure yet, but something along those lines is what I'm thinking. Before getting into the best of Super Juniors, I will say I'm going to be talking many different wrestling companies on this podcast. There's going to be WWE, there's NXT. Yes, I'm one of those assholes that considers NXT a separate company from WWE, but there's a lot of differences. They Barely reference it in the main roster. That's a topic for another time. Uh, not this week. Uh, I'll be talking progress wrestling whenever I get a chance. I'll be talking impact possibly. Uh, and anything else I can find. Ring of Honor. NWA. All Elite Wrestling when that starts up in roughly 13 days. Very excited for that one. Um, also, if you didn't know, I write for allthingscombat.com. I post articles... As often as possible, sometimes they're very extensive, where I actually talked about every... I posted an article this week talking about every competitor in Best of the Super Juniors and ranking them on their chances of winning the tournament. And I also posted uh, today, How Did They Get Here?, which is a weekly article where I look at how a certain wrestler got to this point in their career. Uh, The first week was Mustafa Ali, or as he's known now, just Ali. Uh, Last week is Sonya Deville. This week was Ruby Riot. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I just look at how they started their journey and how they ended up getting found by WWE. So far, it's just been WWE. I plan on getting to New Japan at some point. I plan on Ring of Honor guys. Maybe even retired wrestlers. I'm not 100% sure yet, but it's all opportunity. It's all on the table. Uh, also, before jumping straight into the best of the Super Juniors... Uh, Progress Wrestling recently had their Super Strong Style 16 tournament. Uh, It is their annual tournament where they have 16 of the best wrestlers in the world uh, compete in a three-day tournament to determine who gets a shot at the Progress Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Right now it happens to be Volter, which is very scary because he is one of the best big man wrestlers I've seen in a very long time. So... I don't want to spoil anything, but good luck to the guy who won it. I will say I also did breaking down and predicting Super Strong Style 16 for All Things Combat. And my top eight ended up facing each other in the first round. My number two and number four faced each other in the first round in the main event of day one. I was not very happy. Jim, buddy, come on. Can you break the brackets a little bit better next time, please? I know it's a random draw, but come on. Don't put Ridgeway against O'Reilly in the first round when I want to see that as my semifinal. Yes, this is just me being annoying, but please, do something about that. Um, so, best of Super Juniors. For those of you who don't watch New Japan, you're probably wondering, what the hell is this tournament? I've heard about it, but I've never seen it, and I don't know anything about it. Well, that's why I'm here. Uh, best of Super Juniors is New Japan's annual beginning of summer tournament to determine... Who gets a chance at the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship at Dominion? Uh, Also at Dominion this year, they have to compete against Chris Jericho versus Kazuchi Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Dominion's already looking like a great card. For those that might know a little bit, Dominion was the pay-per-view last year where it was Omega versus Okada 4, 2 out of 3 falls, 67-minute, 7-star Meltzer Classic. If you go by that system, I personally don't. But I will say it is a good match. But you have to have time on your hands to watch it. Um, 
So that's an important pay-per-view for New Japan. It's maybe their second biggest one after Wrestle Kingdom. But it's already looking like a fun year for New Japan at the show. Um, so best of Super Juniors to determine who challenges for the Junior Heavyweight belt. In New Japan, there's different uh, rankings. Junior Heavyweights are 220 and lower. So anybody under 220 can challenge for the uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. If you're above 220... Or if you're somebody like Will Ospreay, I know Kota Ibushi does it. Um, I think Omega might be in that category too. I'm not 100% sure how much he weighs on the top of my head. I know Omega, uh, Ibushi is under 205 because he was on the Cruiserweight Classic for WWE. But that was four, three, four years ago at this point, so a lot can change. Um, Best of Super Juniors last year. You had a very fun tournament. Uh, you had Taiji Ishimori coming back for the first time since 2010, I believe. This is how professional it is. I should have wrote and written this down, and I didn't. Yes, 2010, where he lost to Prince Devitt in the semifinals after winning uh, A block, B block. Uh, so it was Ishimori's first tournament back. I picked him to win the whole thing. Not knowing Hiromu Takahashi would have a fantastic tournament. Um, they, those two met in the finals. Uh, Hiromu picked up the win. Went on to beat uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Will Ospreay at Dominion. Uh, that was maybe one of the most fun finals in a long time. Because the finals before that, you had you had uh, Will Ospreay versus Kushida. You had... Rasuke Taguchi versus Kish- uh, versus uh, Will Ospreay, excuse me. Kyle O'Reilly versus Kushida. So, like, in those three years before Ishimori versus Takahashi, you had a huge, wide variety of different styles meeting. Uh, O'Reilly versus Kushida wasn't going to be the flying around junior heavyweights that you usually see for New Japan. This was going to be a submission-style match. It ended up with Kushida winning via submission. Uh, in 2016, with Taguchi versus Osprey, you had the high flying of Osprey versus the funky weapon in Taguchi. Uh, you were gonna have a huge clash of styles where Taguchi would, would have to try to ground Osprey. Didn't work. Osprey won, but that's what he would have had to try to do. Uh, 2017, you saw Osprey versus Kushida again, a clash of styles. Uh, Kushida actually won that one, and that's what started kind of like the big four thing for uh, New Japan's junior heavyweight division. You would have Hiromu Takahashi, Marty Skrull, Will Ospreay, and Kushida meet, not just in the Best of Super Juniors with Ospreay and Hiromu being in the same block and Kushida. Well, no, you had Ospreay, Hiromu, and Skrull in the same block while Kushida was by himself in the B block. Um, But you look at it, it made sense for Kushida to win, so that way you could have Skrull beat him, and then Ospreay finally break the tradition of Skrull beats Ospreay as one of the three guarantees in life uh and then last year with the final of Ishimori versus Takahashi you just had two guys flying around the entire building essentially where they could just go and do whatever they wanted which was a lot of fun to watch but very 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 fast paced and rather long clocking in at 34 minutes so this year is the 26th best of the super juniors um and it's got a wide variety of guys who are going to be in the tournament to also uh, bolster New Japan's working relationship with a couple other companies. So for New Japan regulars in the tournament, you have Shingo Takagi, Sho, Taiji Ishimori, Tiger Mask, Takamishinoku, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Bushi, uh, Ren Narita, Rocky Romero, Raisuke Taguchi, Will Ospreay, and Yo. Uh, you also have CMLL competitors, Dragon Lee and Titan. Ring of Honor is being represented by four different wrestlers with Marty Skrull, Jonathan Gresham, three different wrestlers. It was four. More than that in a minute. Uh, so you have Skrull, Gresham, and Bandito making his Best of the Super Juniors debut. Same with Gresham. And Revolution Pro Wrestling is getting a representative in El Fantasmo. That is huge, especially considering earlier this year at Wrestle Kingdom, Wrestle Kingdom, Wrestle Kingdom 14, 13, I am just all over the place. At Wrestle Kingdom 13, you had 
uh, Tomohiro Ishii, who was then the Rev Pro British Heavyweight Champion going against Zack Sabre Jr. On the main show, that was huge for Rev Pro to have their belt defended on that type of show. One of the biggest shows of the year. Maybe the biggest show next to WrestleMania. Put an asterisk next to that because there's a whole lot of other shows that are really big. Just in WWE, you have Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. I can't speak English, apparently. Uh, SummerSlam and Survivor Series. New Japan, you have Wrestle Kingdom. You have Dominion. Uh, for all elite wrestling, when they start up, they're probably going to have a couple big shows a year. Ring of Honor's got their few big shows. So there's a lot. There's a lot you have to consider. Um, but at that show, it was big for Rev Pro to be represented at Wrestle Kingdom, and now they're represented in the Best of Super Juniors, and according to me, they're going to be represented really well. But before we get to the actual tournament, there is the elephant in the room with the Best of the Super Juniors this year. You had last year. Last year you had El Desperado. And Flip Gordon in the tournament. Uh, both guys look really good. Uh, Flip Gordon actually beat uh, Taiji Ishimori, if I remember correctly. Uh, he did. Yeah, he did. He beat him. And then Desperado beat uh, Romu Takahashi, the eventual winner. There's like deep history there. I don't want to get too much into it at this point. It's it's very long and complicated. Like. 95% of New Japan's history. Um, well, it's not long and complicated. It's long, and you have to have a lot of backstory explained to you if you don't understand everything. Um, but those two guys were, were scheduled to represent New Japan. Um, well, were scheduled to be in uh, Best of the Super Juniors, and there were some issues. Desperados makes more sense. He had to withdraw due to injury prior to the tournament at... Taka Taichi Mania 2, uh, Desperado broke his jaw in a match, so he was advised not to compete, and he's going to follow doctor's orders, which is very smart if you ask me, and uh, I can talk about that a little bit. So to me, Desperado, they announced the blocks beforehand, uh, he was in B block, which is very, very weak this year. Uh, I, I say that, I, I'm not... An authority on this matter, but it's very weak to me, in my opinion. Uh, so you have you were gonna have breakout guys, and I thought Desperado could have been one of those guys, especially you look at his stable Suzuki Goon, le- which is led by Minoru Suzuki, aka Satan walking this earth. He would have been a perfect guy to have a breakout tournament because of the members of Suzuki Goon that considered junior heavyweights. You have Zack Saber Jr., who's busy with everything he does in the heavyweight division. Tying up Tanahashi in knots, uh, caving in Tetsuya Naito's chest, and all those other things. So he's going to be a little busy at that division for a while. Um, you have Taka Mishinoku, you have Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and you have El Desperado. Of the three, Desperado is A, the youngest, but B, to me, he's the best wrestler of that group. Yes, Michinoku is good, don't get me wrong. I think Michinoku is great. But I don't think he needs a run now with this type, the new type of super juniors. You have guys that fly around the ring. Michinoku's gonna struggle to keep up to keep up with that. So that kind of eliminated him for me. Plus, he's had his time in the sun, and I think he's willing to have somebody else, you know, in the limelight and have the chances that he's had in the past. Uh, and to me, I'm not the biggest fan of Yoshinobu Kanemaru. I'm. It just doesn't click with me. I don't know what it is. I have nothing against him. I think he's he's a decent enough wrestler in the ring. It's just something doesn't click. And it's annoying when it's like that. Like, you know they're good. It's just... It doesn't work for everybody. And that happens to me with Kanemaru. So I thought Desperado would have had a great tournament. He had a fantastic draw, too. Uh, he didn't get Osprey till the second half of the tournament. Spoilers for the rest of the block, but... Well, Osprey was in the B block. Still is in the B block. Um, so that one is at least understandable with Desperado breaking his jaw. What is annoying is the one with Flip Gordon. Uh, Flip Gordon represents Ring of Honor. He is from the United States, so he has to get a working visa 
to even be able to compete in Japan or around the world for that matter. And he just recently came back from injury. His first match was back at the G1 special uh, in Madison Square Garden where he teamed with Juice Robinson and Mark Haskins to go against the team of Bully Ray, Shane Taylor, and Silas Young. Uh, he was victorious in that, and he looked really good after just coming back from knee surgery. So it was going to be exciting to see him in the best of the Super Juniors this year. He was also in B-Block, which was going to be a great draw for him. Um, he had, if I can remember how this works, he would have had Robbie Eagles. He would have had, uh, where the hell is Ren? Rocky Romero, and he would have had uh, Bandito really early. You would have had Desperado first match, but that wasn't going to happen with the injury. The issue with the visa has been a big thing for New Japan recently. They had a problem when it was New Beginnings, where a lot of guys couldn't get visas to work in the United States, which was really annoying because you had to take a lot of big names off the card. Um, and you had guys that were going to be fun to watch at the shows. All of a sudden, nope, 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 they're not here. Sorry, but... New Japan needs to figure this out. They can't just go week after week waiting for the last minute to, to get the visa issue in order. They have to figure this out now, which is going to be a long and complicated process. But somebody has to do it. And if it's Gato, if it's uh, Harold Maya, I don't know whose job it is exactly. But somebody has to do it, so they need to get on that. Uh, both guys were replaced in the tournament. Um Flip Gordon was replaced by young lion Ren Narita, who, if you don't understand the New Japan system, and if you watch WWE a lot more, the New Japan Dojo is where the young lions go, and there's somebody who wants to become a pro wrestler. It's essentially the performance center. Um, there they learn how to be a pro wrestler, and they train every single day for it. Uh, Ren is one of the young lions in it. Uh, another name is Shota Unomo, who is son of legendary referee Red Shoes. Um, you also have Tomoyuki. Yeah, I'm saying it's Tomoyuki Oka, who is currently on excursion in the UK. And Hire. Her, <laughs> I'm not good at names, okay? Irari, H I R A I. Kawado, who is currently in Mexico on excursion. Uh, Narita and Utomo, Unomo, I think, are ready for Excursion, but it's not up to the fans. It's annoying, but it's not our choice. Uh, but I don't expect a lot from Narita. I expect to have him look good. He's going to learn a lot in this tournament. But it's not going to be enough, I don't think. Uh, more on that in a little bit. Um, and you have him in a block that screams Breakout Star. Narita's not going to put up 15 points in this block and win it. It's not going to happen. I think that they're both ready, and it's going to be interesting to see how much longer they hang around. Um, if you're wondering how the, well the Young Lions system works, uh, some of the graduates are wrestlers you probably have heard of. Um, Roshi Tanahashi, Hiroki Goto, Ben Balor, Tetsuya Naito, Taichi, Yoshihashi, Kazuchika Okada, Tamatonga, and uh, recently, the most successful uh, class... You had David Finley, Hiromu Takahashi, Juice Robinson, Sho, Yo, Jay White, and Toa Hanare. Hanare seems to be set for something. I don't know what, but hopefully he figures it out. So Narita is replacing Flip Gordon, which is a big shame because I think Flip is fantastic. And to me, at least, Narita seems like a step down simply because of the limitations put on the Young Lions. Um, the other person replacing Desperado is... And a lot of people are going to get this name wrong, me included. Uh, it's going to take a little while to get used to it. I'm going to say it's Doki. D-O-U-K-I. I tried to find as much on this guy as possible. And it's almost impossible to find stuff. He had two matches from what I could find. And both were tag matches. There's not a singles match I could find. So I was like racking my brain trying to think of a way to describe this guy. Uh, ta excuse me. Tai Chi did it. Very well. He's a hired gun for Suzuki Goon for this tournament to replace Desperado, which is going to be very fun to watch and see what Doki can do through the tournament. So let's talk about the tournament itself. How it works this year is there are 20 wrestlers broken into two different blocks. 
There's A block and B block. Creative names, I know. Um, you face everybody once. It's a round robin where you get two points for a win, one point for a draw, which has not happened since 2007, and zero points for a loss. Um, you have a 30-minute time limit to get the match done, and then your points are dispersed. So I'm very excited for this year's tournament, especially the A block. So in the A block, you have Dragon Lee, Jonathan Gresham, Marty Squirrel, Shingo Takagi, Sho, Taiji Ishimori, Taka Michinoku, Tiger Mask, Titan, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. This is a very top-heavy block. If you ask people who's going to win A block this year, and they know wrestling a little bit, or at least New Japan wrestling, they're going to say either Dragon Lee, Marty Skrull, Shingo Takagi, or Taiji Ishimori. That's because those are the big four. It seems like every year there's always four or five guys that stand up uh, head or shoulders above the rest and like are obvious picks to win the tournament. Those four are that category this year. And it's... It's going to be very fun to follow them, but the other 5% would probably pick Sho. Sho is someone who has looked really good since coming back from Excursion in Ring of Honor. And he it looks like a total package. He can high fly with the likes of him. He can grapple with the likes of the, 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 He can grapple with the best of them. And he, he has the look. He looks like a junior heavyweight that can go against other heavyweights. And actually not look like he's going to just be there to take the loss like most junior heavyweights are against heavyweights. It's a lot like Shingo Takagi. Also, uh, New Japan, if you're listening, please give me Shingo Takagi versus Minoru Suzuki. Thank you. Um, it, it will be interesting to see what Sho does in this tournament because I think he's primed for a breakout tournament. Another person primed for a breakout tournament is Titan. Uh, Titan is with Dragon Lee as a part of the CMLL crew. Uh, those two are tag team partners from what I could gather still. And Titan is very fun to watch. He's your typical junior heavyweight. He flies around. He looks good. He has a lot of fun in the ring. He's also got the issue where he's the stereotypical um, Mexican wrestler. He relies a lot on big moves. And it's something that doesn't work well for me. You need to be able to set up those big moves. You can't just go, oh, here's a moonsault. Oh, here's a shooting star press. Oh, here's this other big move where I almost break my own back. It's the same issue I had with Daga in Super Strong Style 16. You can't just go big move, big move, big move, big move. You have to set those up. You have to take the time in between to actually get to that point. Um, and I think Titan still has time to learn it, and he's going to have a good tournament, especially given the draw. Uh, outside of the big four and maybe show, that's what? Math, brain. Four. He's, look, he's sitting at eight points already. And you usually get 10, you win the block, but with this deep of a field, you need a lot more than 10. Uh, tell me, I have, I have what? Five. I have 12 guys breaking 10 points this year. And Titan is sitting at eight. I don't remember how I got that eight. Um, probably losing to the big five ahead of him, but yeah. So, with A block, you have the big four. It's probably going to be Takagi, Skrull, Lee, or Ishimori. Um, looking at some of the big matches, A block starts with a huge, huge night one. You have Shingo Takagi versus Sho. These guys have a little bit of a history with the Los Angobernables de Japan junior heavyweights of Takagi and Bushi chasing after uh, Rapongi 3K's Sho and Yo. For the junior heavyweight tag titles. Um, Takagi and Bushi won them at Wrestle Kingdom. In a result I think 99% of people saw coming. That was maybe the most predictable of the Wrestle Kingdom matches. So yeah. Um, but we haven't seen these two in singles action. I think this is going to be Shingo's first big like singles thing in New Japan. He was a huge signing late in 2018. Before, uh, after ta after Takahashi uh, broke his neck, unfortunately. Uh, speaking of which, Takahashi and Chris Saban are out of this tournament due to injury. Takahashi with the broken neck. Uh, Chris Saban tore his ACL at a Ring of Honor house show two months ago, roughly, I want to say. So he's not going to be able to be in the tournament. Same with Romu. 
Uh, Hiromu has been giving updates, and he seems like he's nearing the chance to be ready to go and wrestle again, which would be nice to see, but it's going to be a little while still, I think. Um, so I think Takagi could be the replacement for Hiromu, quote-unquote replacement, as like one of the big names for this tournament. Uh, and he looked good. He has the good. He has a good look. He looks great in the ring. Same with Show. Uh, at least to match up on the first night, it's going to be an all-out slugfest. I have uh, Shingo winning that match, and then Ishimori versus Dragon Lee. Um, Dragon Lee won the IWGP heavy, Junior Heavyweight Title from Taiji Ishimori at G One Special in Madison Square Garden. Uh, the day before WrestleMania, I don't remember the number, which is a shame. Um, but this is very big for Ishimori. He lost his title. He lost the rematch. Now he has to win this tournament just to have another shot at his title. He wants his title back. He has to beat Dragon Lee first, which is no no easy task. But I have him doing it simply because he's lost a lot and it's hurt his image, for lack of a better term. So he needs to start rebuilding and become the Bowen Soldier from last year in this tournament. I think he gets it started versus Dragon Lee, which would be very important because if you are a singles champion, like I believe Dragon Lee is the only one in this tournament who has a singles title right now, uh, he would have to, if he wins the tournament and he was able to retain at Dominion, he has to face every single person he lost to. So he can't have two, three bad nights in a row. He can only have one bad night. He can afford one. If he gets two or three in a row, He's going to have a lot of title defenses coming his way. A lot like they kept talking about just Robinson in the G1 uh, Climax tournament last year because he lost so many matches in the beginning and then won three of his last four, I believe. Um, so that's going to be a big one night one. And Ishimori is going to start building back up his image, which is very important for him. Um, night three. There's three interesting matches here. Um, let's start with Titan versus Shingo Takagi. Like I said, these are two big two guys that like big moves and hit very hard. Um, you're going to have Titan flying around, but it's going to be Takagi's goal to kind of try and ground him, which is going to be very key for him to win. Um, since I think Shingo is going to have a great tournament, I have him winning. Uh, but it's not going to be an easy one. People are going to kind of like be like, oh, okay, it's, it's Shingo Takagi. We've seen him wrestle so many times. We've seen Titan not as often, unless you're a typical viewer of CMLL. And you're going to have him be kind of written off in this match, you think. Titan's going to stick around, and uh, Shingo's going to have some issues. Which is going to be interesting to see, and see how he deals with that. He's the former face of Dragon Gate, essentially. So, you have to think he's ready for that kind of challenge. Uh, then you have... The main event of Night 3 is Dragon Lee versus Sho. I said Sho is a big name, and he's going to have a lot of good matches. This could be his best match of the tournament. And his best singles match since last year against Marty Skrull on the final night of block action. Uh, you have him going against the reigning IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champ. And he's going to want to look good, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Because I don't think they want Dragon Lee to suffer back-to-back -back losses in the tournament. I'll take Dragon Lee here, but I wouldn't be too surprised, honestly, if Show pulls the upset. The other, the third interesting match for night three to me is Marty Skrull versus Taiji Ishimori. These two are former Bullet Club brothers, and after the uh, whole turn with Tongans and Ishimori siding with them at whatever show that was, that was the American show. The G1, I don't want to say it was the G1 special in San Francisco. I don't remember for a fact though. So you have them finally facing off one on one. Um, it's going to be Ishimori's speed and striking against Skrull's ground-based offense. And he does have some big moves. He has the Black Plague at his disposal now that he hit on Nick Aldis he, at, for the NWA title. You ha he has Ghostbusters, though, but it's that cross-face chicken wing that scares me. That cross-face chicken wing is brutal. And good luck to Ishimori if he gets stuck in that, because he's a lot smaller. So he's not going to be able to reach the ropes for a rope break as easily. Unless they're, you know, right next to the ropes. Which, Skrull is smart. He wouldn't let that happen. Uh, two former champs meeting up. I'm taking Skrull here. Because of the implications it has later. Um, if I had taken Ishimori, it would have complicated things a lot later. And I wanted it to be kind of simple. 
not too many tiebreakers to think about. Not too many. Oh, if this if X Y Z maybe Q happen, then S has a shot. No, no, I don't want that. I want it to be simple, and I want it to be. This guy has more points than this guy. This guy wins. Um, night five is kind of a slow night. When your main event of the night is Shingo Takagi versus Yoshinobu Kanemaru. That's saying something. Um, and then night seven is very big. It's the first night of dual block action. Where you'll have A block matches and you'll have B block matches. Uh, flipping in between. There's going to be a couple big matches from both both blocks. Um, but the one in A block that's the most noteworthy is Marty Skrull versus Shingo Takagi. I have a feeling these two are going to be tied at six going into that match. Takagi's road to get to that point. He has Sho. He has... Where are you at? Night three. He has Titan. And on night five, he has Kanemaru. Three very winnable matches. Uh, he's beaten Sho before. You could do it again. Why not? Um... And then Skrull, up to that point, he has Gresham, he has uh, Ishimori, and he has Tiger Mask. Two winnable matches in that big one with Ishimori. Um, if he beats Ishimori, he does have to watch out for that upset special waiting there for him at Tiger Mask. I don't know if Tiger Mask would be the person that beats Skrull first in this tournament, simply because he's more of the guy who's ready to be there to put over the next big star or the big star of today, like he did last year with Ishimori. That was a block, right? Yeah, because of uh, him and ACH on the last night. Very weird. I remember that because a block. Oh, a block, a C H. Mm. Anyway, getting off topic here. <laughs> um, one episode in, and I can't keep a simple, a simple mind. Yay. Um. So, I have those two at six going into into the night. Um, Ishimori that night would get six points. Same with Dragon Lee. So that main event between Skrull and Shingo, I believe it's the main event. The other option is Osprey versus Phantasma, which would also be a great main event. Um, that match with Skrull versus uh, yeah Shingo Takagi would be very very big. That would mean somebody would take the lead at eight points. And I'm taking Shingo Takagi to do that simply because of I'm relying on something big on the final night, which is going to be very, very tough. But I, I can really see it happening. Um, But Shingo matches up very well against Skrull. Skrull's not the hardest hitter, where Shingo makes everything look just brutal. And I think Skrull would have a tough time against uh, Shingo. And it's it's a tough call, really. I kind of debated about it for a little while. Do I go Skrull? Do I go Takagi? Well, if I do this, then that's going to happen. And it's it's a whole big wrestling scenario that always plays in my head whenever I watch wrestling. Um, but I am taking Shingo Takagi, which will give him the lead at eight points at the halfway point of the tournament. There are 14 nights, and that's night seven. Um, night eight doesn't look like too many big things. <laughs> Uh, well, two, actually. No, I'm actually looking at the right side of the paper. Um, you have Sho versus Marty Skrull, and you have Dragon Lee versus Shingo Takagi. You also have Ishimori versus Kanemaru, but who cares about Kanemaru? Uh, easy two points for Ishimori. Would put him tied for the lead with uh, Shingo at eight. So you then look, you have Sho versus Skrull. This is the rematch from last year. Last year, uh, you had Hiromu Takahashi... Kushida and Marty Skrull tied at eight. Going into the final night, uh, Romu and Kushida were going to go against each other while Skrull had Sho. All Skrull had to do, beat Sho, get to the back, and hope for a draw. Because in, in block action, he lost to both Romu and Kushida. But Sho had other ideas. Sho went out and did what nobody thought he would do. He beat former IWGP champion and the person who was in that big feud with Dalton Castle for the Ring of Honor heavyweight title, Marty Skrull. He beat him on the final night to cost Skrull a shot at the finals. 
if you don't think Show has that in mind going into this match and Skrull's not looking for revenge, you don't watch enough sports. That is a big, big factor going into this match. All that being said, I'm picking Skrull. Sorry, sorry Show, but your time's coming, bud. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, and that is something I, I do want to address in the future. What is going to happen with Marty Skrull? Um, that could be next week, actually. There's a couple factors in there, and I'll, I'll be willing to talk about that. Um... So that would put Skrull at eight too. So the big four would be tied at the big the big four would have three Ishimori, Skrull, and Takagi tied at eight, with Takagi having the tiebreaker over Skrull and Skrull having the tiebreaker over Ishimori, and then we get to Dragon Lee versus Shingo Takagi. I have Dragon Lee winning it, which puts him into this whole mess. Um, the reason I have Dragon Lee winning that match is simply because he's gonna be trying to ground. Uh, Sh- Shingo's going to try and ground Ishi- uh, Dragon Lee, excuse me. And it's going to be a tough task. I think you could look at Shingo and say he's not the type of guy to fly around the ring. He's fast, but he's not fly around the ring fast like Dragon Lee or even Ishimori. But I think he could try to ground Dragon Lee. The issue is Dragon Lee's just as good on the ground as he is in the air. He's a very good all around wrestler, and I think he's got enough. Shingo's going to be able to ground him for a little while, but not the whole match. There's no way. So I think Dragon Lee picks up the win on night eight, which puts the big four tied at eight points. Being trailed by, if the math is right in my head, one, two, three. Being trailed by Titan at six points. Which takes us to night nine. Um... Or is that called the upset special night? Uh, I have Skrull and Takagi both losing to Takamichinoku and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. There's a reason they're early in the in the card. There's not a reason for them to be later in the card if it's going to be a, a huge upset. If it's later in the card, you're going to think, oh, this is an easy win for uh, Skrull or Takagi. Or you can think it early in the card, and I'm just overthinking this. But I think we could see the upset specials with Kanemaru and Takamichinoku. I don't... I don't like Kanemaru. I've said this a bunch already. But you always see an upset. And with Skrull's next match in the tournament, it would be a big match. Um, So he could be overlooking Yoshinobu. And Shingo could be doing the same. Well, he could just be also tired from Dragon Lee. I'm like looking at this as I talk, which is not professional, but I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think anybody ever knows what they're doing, so... Fun. Um, I think with Taka, he has the experience to beat somebody like Shingo, which would be very important. Which would also open the door for Ishimori to take the block lead. Ishimori takes the block lead there at 10. So you would have everybody chasing Taiji Ishimori, including Dragon Lee. The main event of Night 9 is Dragon Lee versus Titan. It's either, this could be me reading into it too much. I have Titan beating Dragon Lee. Titan beating Dragon Lee. I think I said that right the first time, but it sounded weird in my head. Um, Simply because I think they want to expose Titan more. And because I believe CMLL has a big show after Best of the Super Juniors. If Dragon Lee is the one to still be IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion by the time that show rolls around. They could want that title match on the show, and you could have Dragon Lee versus Titan for that mat for that championship, which would be very interesting to see. I would like to see Titan get more exposure, which would be great for him. Um, he's he is a good wrestler and somebody who I think could be a major player in the future, if if New Japan is very interested in him, which it seems like they are, since they're bringing him back for his first Best of Super Juniors in a long time. So that would put. Ishimori alone at 10. And then everybody would join him again because I have them all winning the next night except for Ishimori. Sorry, Ishimori. Um, I know I haven't touched much on Gresham, but it's his first tournament. I am not expecting too much out of him. He, he's going to be a, he's gonna have a good tournament, I, don't, I think. He'll look good in the ring, but I don't know if that will translate to points or not. And with, with the best of Super Juniors, you want points. Um, so night 10, I do have him beating Kanemaru. In the whole tournament, I have him beating Kanemaru, and I think it's Tiger Mask. 
No, it's Taka. I have Tiger, Tiger Mask beating um, Gresham on night eight. Yeah, eight. Um, so you look at it, you have, on night ten, you have Skrull versus Titan in a big one that would be two eight-point guys matching up. Uh, Shingo looking for a very important win over Tiger Mask. Dragon Lee versus Taka, Michinoku, just to even try and stay at it. And Sho versus Ishimori. So, going into this, Ishimori would be the only one at 10. Uh, Titan, Skrull, Takagi, and Lee would all be tied at 8. Um, so, that would mean they would all win it. I have Skrull, Shingo, and Dragon Lee winning on night 10, which will put them at 8. And they'll put them at 10. They would have 10. Ishimori would, if Ishimori wins the main event against Sho, well, the main event of A Block against Sho, that would put Ishimori at 12. It wouldn't stop um, Skrull, Shingo, or Lee from winning the block, or even Titan. But it'd be very, very challenging from that point on. Um, Skrull would technically have the easier path, but it would be a challenge for him still. Um, Dragon Lee would actually have a... Dragon Lee and Skrull have a similar path. Ishimori and Shingo meet on the final night. Which is very important. Uh, I'll talk about that when we get there. But night 10, I have Sho getting another big win in his career. Beating Ishimori and making that four-way tie at the top of A block. The reason why is the long haul. I think they want this to come down to night 13. They don't want it to be... It, it could be just you have, oh, Shingo Takagi has this many points. And trailing him by two is Ishimori. Can Ishimori get it done and go three for three in block action and get to the finals again? Or is Takagi going to be able to finish the job and get to the block final? We'll get to the finals to have a chance at the IWGP heavyweight title at Dominion. It's it's a tough call, but I have show simply because I want I th- I think they want to have two very important matches for A Block on night thirteen, and this will make it happen. Plus, Sho is always looking for a big singles win. Whenever he's usually used as a tag, he's usually a tag wrestler. But as a singles guy, he could use a big win every year. Uh, he got it against Scroll last year, and I think he gets it against Ishimori this year. And that way, you can set up a fun night thirteen. But to get to night thirteen, you have to get through night eleven, and I think they all do. To be fair. So night eleven, uh, there's no real big matches. I mean, event is Dragon Lee versus Yoshinobu Kanemaru. If Dragon Lee has a huge block lead at that point, I can see Kanemaru pulling the upset, but I don't think it's going to be a huge lead at that point. He would actually be behind Skrull, Ishimori, and Shingo, who would all be at twelve. Uh, he would be Kanemaru and get to twelve himself, setting up night thirteen. At this point, only those four are left alive. Show Titan. Taka, Tiger Mask, Gresham, and Kanemaru would all be mathematically eliminated. Um, it would set up a very, very interesting final, final night. Uh, so the f- two matches that are important would be Dragon Lee versus Marty Skrull and Shingo Takagi versus Taiji Ishimori. I think they want Skrull versus Lee to go first. Simply because, as I know, he's, Lee is currently to the... the Lee is the current champion, and it would be sensible for him to be in the main event. But I think you want Skrull versus Lee to go before Takagi versus Ishimori because of the story he could tell. Skrull got to this point last year. He had a chance to win the block. He just had to win his match and wait. He lost, and that has been eating at him for a whole year. And now he's got a chance for redemption. I think Skrull beats Lee on the final night to get to 14 points. And then the main event would be Takagi versus Ishimori. It would be weird because this has not happened, as I said earlier, since 2007. I think Takagi versus Ishimori ends in a draw. They both end at 13 points. Marty Skrull goes on to win A block. Skrull wins A block and... It would be very interesting because the last match would be a draw. So you'd have to have Skrull come out to face to stare down with the B-Block winner. 
Or you have them both at ringside just to watch or something. I don't know. Um, I think... I have debated on this one for a long time. Ishimori has looked bad recently with all those losses, especially losing the title to Dragon Lee. Shingo's been a tag team wrestler since he came to New Japan. Do they really push him to the moon and give him a chance to have a match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title? Do they go with the former champ or do they go with Skrull? Plus, you can follow the incentive of, like I said earlier, Le- uh, Skrull's gone. I can't. I get names confused. Ishimori's gone two for two in block action. He's won his block twice to get to the finals. Shingo's never been in a, sh- a championship situation like this where he has to win to just have a chance to have another match. And if he wins that, he gets a shot at the title. It, it would be a huge scenario, but that's the reason I have Skrull winning it because it takes away that scenario and you have a wrestler in Skrull who can then go on to win the title and set up a return for somebody, and I'll talk about that theory at the end here, because there's still a whole nother block to go. We got B block, or should I say, Will Ospreay, and everybody else. I flipped my notebook the wrong way. There we go. So, in this block, you have Bandito, Bushi, Douki, El Fantasmo, Ren Narita, Robbie Eagles, Rocky Romero, Raisuke Taguchi, Will Ospreay, and Yo. Who challenges Will Ospreay in this? There's a reason I picked Flip Gordon, and Flip had to go and not get a visa in time. So, Flip, thank you for that. It's it's Will Ospreay versus the field, essentially. I think 99% of people are going to take Will Ospreay. There's going to be that one or two that are like, well, this person's ready for a push. This person's ready for a run. It's, It's all speculation at this point. Tournament starts on Monday, but we'll see. Um... It's, it's interesting having Bandito, Bushi, Daruki in the same block. All masked wrestlers, which are very is very interesting. Um, Rocky Romero and Bushi in the same block. For those that don't know, Rocky Romero hates Bushi. Don't know if they ever went into why, but he does. So, oh well. Um, El Fantasmo, Daruki, Robbie Eagles, and Ren Narita all make their... And Bandito. All make their best of the Super Juniors debut. It will be interesting to see who is going to get the opportunities here. Does New Japan go with the guy like Bendito, who is a great wrestler, and same with Phantasmo, and give them a chance to uh, challenge the former face of the division? Uh, do they go with one of the other three former champions in the block with Bushi, uh, Taguchi, or Romero? Do they go with the upstart of Yo getting a win over Osprey? Because Osprey's not going to run the table. They teased this with Omega last year in the uh, G1 Climax. They're not going to tease it again in the same calendar year. At least I don't think they would. They could, and I'm just stupid, but who knows. Um, it, It's a very interesting draw, too. For the first three nights, Rusuke Taguchi's in the main event. I don't know why. I don't get it. Is this like a sign that we're sh- we should be paying attention to Taguchi in this tournament? I don't know. Um, but night two, which is the start of B block action, you have Will Ospreay versus Bushi as the mo- one of the most interesting matches because of the implication it has from last year. Last year, Will Ospreay and Taiji Ishimori finished tied at 10 on the top of the A block. Will Ospreay would have had 12 if he had beaten Bushi. There's that revenge factor again. If Will Ospreay finishes the job this time against Bushi, maybe we see Ospreay getting another chance at the junior heavyweight title. I do want to talk about that really quick. Why is Will Ospreay in this tournament if he has said he is ready to step up to the heavyweight division? He's faced the likes of Jeff Cobb, Kazuchika Okada. Um, I'm trying to remember his entire path from New Japan Cup. Uh, Bad Luck Fale, Lance Archer. He's faced heavyweights, and it's now he's back with the juniors. I don't understand it. Um, that's just something I'm missing, and maybe they'll explain it on night two. But it, it's a very weird situation, to me at least. But I think Osprey does get Bushi. Uh, to be fair, I have Osprey going uh, coast-to-coast for the lead. Um, at some point in the tournament, I do have Bendito and Phantasmo tying him. But Osprey never is lower than first. Or tied for first. 
Um, night four, or night two still, actually. Another interesting match is Bandito versus Fantasma. You're going to have two guys flying around the ring doing everything they can think of, which is going to be very fun to watch. If you've not seen Fantasma or Bushi, or uh, not Bushi, if you've not seen Fantasma or Bandito before, I suggest looking up some stuff. Those two are really, really good. And it's scary because they're so young and how good they can still become. So night four is a little bit of a quiet night. Um, the best matchup there really is Bushi versus Phantasmo, I think at least. Um, with that, you have the cunningness of Bushi, the ever heel, even though LIJ is super loved all over Japan and the rest of the world for that matter. Uh, against high-flying Phantasmo, Bushi is going to be able to ground him, but for how long? That's the big question. Uh, Yo versus Bandito can be good, but it's it's something that you have to build up. And with just two nights in between, it, it'll be tough. It can be done, but it'll be tough. Especially on a card that features Will Ospreay and Phantasmo. Um, night six. This is where it starts to get interesting. You have an all-Bullet Club matchup. You have an all-Chaos matchup. Let's talk about Taguchi versus Bushi first. Two former champs who kind of have been pushed to the back of the New Japan Junior Heavyweight Division. Um, I actually think Bushi is a lot better than people give him credit for. I think he's one of the better uh, Junior Heavyweights New Japan has at their disposal. Take out the guys from Ring of Honor like Skrull, um, Dragon Lee from CMLL. Go just based on New Japan, Bushi is vastly underused. In a beloved stable, he's with the likes of Hiromu Takahashi. He's essentially the sixth fiddle at this point in LIJ. I don't know if he's going to leave at some point, uh, but it would be very tough for him in general. Nobody is, except for Suzuki Goon, nobody is really in need of a junior heavyweight uh, top guy. And they all already have him. Bullet Club's got three at their disposal uh, with Ishimori, Eagles, and Phantasmo. LIJ's got Hiromu when he comes back and Shingo Takagi. Sekigun isn't even a thing anymore, really. Taguchi Japan is Taguchi and Friends, so any of them. Chaos has Will Ospreay and Yo and Sho. It, it, it's tough for Bushi right now. He's a great wrestler, he just doesn't get enough credit, I think. Uh, he, can, he can start to get that, though, if he knocks off Taguchi. Which could set Bushi up for a big run. I do have one upset. I think after the upset, though... How many matches are still there? So that, that would be halfway. So there would still be... One, two, three, four... There's still five. And I, after the one upset, I only have him losing one more match. I have Bushi having a great tournament now that I look at it. Um, but I think Taguchi versus Bushi will be a lot of fun. You have the ultra-serious wrestler in Bushi. Uh, well, serious. Ultra-strict and ultra-rule-breaker. Against the guy that loves to go out there and just have fun and hit people with his butt. Um, that's that's my analysis on Rusuki Taguchi. Uh, research paper coming soon. It, it'll be a very interesting matchup. A good clash of styles, I think. But Bushi gets the advantage to me simply because of the fact that... Maybe they want to build up both Shingo and Bushi. It's kind of like power thing, power guys. To be seen as legit threats in the future for the junior heavyweight division. Even once Hiromu gets back, Hiromu can't win the title and hold it forever. Someone's got to take it, and then maybe Bushi or Shingo can come in and swoop it from him. Then there's the all-chaos matchup of Will Ospreay versus Yo. Um, both guys are really good in the ring. Yo, to, to me, Yo is just too small. He's very compact and very built, but he's just very small. He looks like a small guy. He's not like somebody who looks like his tagging partner show or even Ishimori. It's just a weird thing with me and Yo. I think he's great in the ring. He's fantastic. He can do anything possible. Um, and against Osprey, he's going to get a chance. Osprey is going to make him look fantastic. But in a field like this, Yo could be in for a breakout year. Um, you have him as a guy who's solid, but. He needs something to build off of. And a good tournament here could be that. He could be seen as the next junior heavyweight champion after next year's tournament. He he just needs a solid year. 
and he'll look like a million dollars. And he can make himself look like that, which is great. But the biggest matchup of Night 6, El Phantasmo versus Robbie Eagles. You have the two newest members of Bullet Club going against each other, and it'll be very interesting. It's a good clash, uh, but what's interesting is with Robbie Eagles, he can do a little bit of everything. He can fly high. He can be a mat-based wrestler. He can get technical. He can get hard-hitting. With Phantasmo, he's going to have to fly with him because Phantasmo's chick is going to be bouncing left, right, and center all around that ring. Um, but you look at it, it's it's a tough tournament for me in B-Block because it seems really easy for Osprey to win, but Phantasmo and Bandito scare me a lot. These are guys making their New Japan debuts, essentially. Is New Japan going to be like, oh, hey, welcome to the company. Here's a chance to win the IWGP Heavyweight title. I just don't feel like they will be, but I've been wrong before, especially New Japan. I'm wrong about New Japan 95% of the time, except for when I predicted Tanahashi to beat Omega, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you look at it, though, he he being uh, Robbie Eagles, he doesn't scream junior heavyweight. He screams good wrestler, which will be interesting to see how he develops, because he's still a young kid. Excuse me. Burpee. He's still a young kid, but... He's somebody who could develop into somebody that can be a major player in New Japan. That being said, I have Phantasmo winning. Which, sorry, Robbie. Uh, so now we're at the halfway point of the tournament. Night 7. Um, it's, it's a very weird block. And especially a very weird night on Night 7. You have Bandito versus Red and Rita, which is actually going to be very interesting to see. Um, Rocky Romero versus Yo. And a big all-England matchup with Will Ospreay versus El Fantasma. Bandito versus Narita is interesting. Bandito is a guy that flies all around the ring. Ren Narita is a guy that has basic offense. He doesn't have top rope brain busters, corkscrew 630 splashes, or whatever these kids are doing nowadays. But he is a very he has a very solid base already. In there with Bandito, who is just going to be a human version of a tornado, he's going to be very interesting. It'll be a good match, I think. And Narito's going to learn a lot from Bandito. But Bandito's going to be winning that match. There's no way, there's no doubt in my mind about it. Um, But then you have Rocky Romero versus Yo. It's Rapongi 3K versus Rapongi 3K. You have a young upstart in Yo versus a former champ and somebody who's won seven or so, no, 10 different, he's had 10 different reigns with the IWGP Junior Tag Titles in uh, Rocky Romero, and it'll be something to look out for because of the fact that Romero has taught Yo everything Yo knows, that's the, the story they're telling there, but Rocky hasn't taught Yo everything Rocky knows, so it's essentially student versus mentor, um, I think student gets the win, because I think Rocky is one of the guys that is willing to build up the next stars. And that's why he's in this tournament. He's here to help build stars. That being said, I have him breaking 10 points. <laughs> I have all but four guys in B-Block breaking... All but three guys in B-Block breaking 10 points. Looking at the paper. Um, And then with Osprey versus Phantasmo, that's two guys that are just going to fly all around. Do every single thing you can think of. Um, I'm just imagining that Oz cutter. That Oz cutter is going to be something worth seeing in that match. Especially if he, if, uh, Phantasmo is doing his trick where he walks around the ring. If you remember Undertaker's old school, Phantasmo does that, but he goes all, he can go all the way around the ring on the top rope. Imagine that. Osprey generally pulls him down into an Oz cutter. That's not how the Oz cutter works, never mind. No, it is. Except it'd be a reverse Oz cutter because Osprey, instead of springboarding off the rope, would be pulling him down into it. it it'll be a very interesting matchup, a very high flying affair. People flying left, right, and center. Um, there, there's probably going to be people that get hurt. I feel, which is a shame because both these guys are really good. Uh, I'm taking Osprey because of the experience and because of the fact that I don't think. They're just going to give El Phantasmo a 
uh, match for the t- championship right away. Keep in mind, winner of B Block, in my opinion, is facing Marty Skrull. Phantasmal versus Skrull would be very interesting, but Phantasmal Osprey would be even more interesting to me. Uh, spoilers, I have Osprey versus Skrull. Uh, let's see, night eight. Night eight. The most interesting matchup. I keep saying Will Ospreay's name, but Will Ospreay has the most interesting matchups every single night. It's Ospreay versus Bandito. When Bandito first made it big, he was somebody who you were like, I want to see Bandito versus this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. You kept throwing names out left, right, and center. One of the names the people we kept throwing out, Bandito versus Ospreay. I would love to see it. I think it'd be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun on night eight. As the second half of the tournament gets underway. Um, The big question though. How much is too much for Bandito early? Same with Phantasmo. But I feel like there's more trust in Bandito. Simply because of the fact that he's worked the likes of Dragon Lee and of Titan in this tournament before. And he's probably worked a lot with Osprey. And maybe even El Phantasmo for that matter. But with Bandito... It's already a name people recognize because he main evented um, All In. People recognize that name. And now he's going into a huge tournament. His first ever Best of the Super Juniors. This could be a tournament of the ages for Bandito and Phantasma. And that's the reason why I'm taking Bandito to beat Osprey. Because I think they see Bandito as somebody who could be the future for the Junior Heavyweights. Essentially, B-Block is who's the future of the Junior Heavyweights. You could have Will Ospreay win and be like, oh, hey, even though it's who's the future, the the past and the present still win. Or it could essentially be a changing of the guard of a sense. You would be like, okay, Osprey has been the gatekeeper for a long time, and now he's handing the reins off to Bandito, Phantasmo, Bushi, uh, hell, even maybe Ren Narita, which would be a very interesting interesting match, which is one of the matches of Night 9. Great great segue there. Um, Night 9's a quiet one for, uh, in general, Night 9 was quiet for A block, and it's quiet for B block. Most interesting matchup, really, Yo versus Bushi, because of the history of Rapongi 3K versus LIJ. It would have been nice if it matched up with Sho versus Shingo. You used to do back-to-back matches of that, but... Sho versus Shingo's Night 1. Um... Like I said, Bushi is somebody who's vastly underrated, and I think he can be great. He's a former champion for a reason. Somebody sees something in Bushi. And I'm very excited to see what the future holds for him. But I think it's time that he starts to win. He needs wins. He doesn't win singles matches that often. The last time I remember seeing him win a singles match... Ugh. Last year's Best of the Super Juniors. I don't even know if he's had a singles match since. He probably has, and I'm just dumb. But I don't remember it. Now, you have these companies that you have a working relationship with. NXT and Progress, Evolve, all the UK scene. You see these guys working with these companies. Let Bushi go and work with one of them. Maybe he becomes a champion over there and he, be, he can help bolster himself up. And then come back to New Japan with a better confidence and say, I'm ready for this next step in my career. It's something a lot of people could do, but especially somebody like um, Bushi needs it a lot. Somebody who is good and is a former champion, but just needs that kind of like kick in the butt to say, go do this. We know you can do it. Go do it. Uh, Night 10, Night 10. Night 10 has some interesting mat, a couple interesting matches. Um, I just talked at length about Bendito and Bushi. But they match up, and that could be a lot of fun to watch. Um, to me, it's always fun to watch masked wrestlers go against each other. But especially with Bushi and the Green Mist, I'm curious how that would work with Bandito. He doesn't have a lot of uh, facial area to get hit. Plus, he does have the bandana that he wears. I think it's just part of his mask. But if he can like pull it up above his eyes when Bushi goes for that, that'd be a really cool spot, I think. This is just the guy who's talking out of his butt but it's called armchair arm dragger for a reason eh I sit around and I talk about wrestling it's the joke 
please laugh. Um, actually, wait, is this, is this the first night I have? No, so I have that wrong. Oh, well. I'll fix that later. Um, math is not my friend. <laughs> I had Taguchi at four points. I have Taguchi extra getting six. Now that I look at it. Um, but night, night ten, you have Yo versus El Phantasmo and Will Osprey versus Robbie Eagles. Um, I'm taking Yo here because if I don't, Phantasmo and Osprey tie. And that's the reason I have Bushi over Bandito. So that way I can avoid unnecessarily complicated tiebreakers. And you can look at it and say, okay, Osprey is winning the block easily. Or one of the new guys. Which is annoying, but it's like, that's essentially the situation they're in a B block. It's an annoying situation. You're like, do we put over the young new guys that are fresh faces to the Japanese crowd? Or do we put over the guy that we've known for years and the Japanese crowd loves? Do you take the risk or do you play it safe? I'd love to see them take the risk, but I feel like they're going to play it safe. New Japan's not a company that takes too many risks. They took the risk on Omega, and look where that left them. No Omega, no, excuse me, no Bucks, no no Page, no Cody. It's a big issue, and I don't think they want to take a risk again. They want to play it safe, which is probably why they have Osprey in the tournament. Um, I have Yo beating Phantasma because of an implication. Say, say, <coughs> excuse me. Say Osprey kind of comes out and like is distractive of Phantasmo, and he's distracting him and causing an issue. And Yo rolls him up and beats him. You fast forward to the next B block match, which would be Osprey versus Eagles. Phantasmo returns the favor, and then you kind of build that feud up a little bit, and you could have you could have that be a one off match. You don't need a title for that kind of feud. And that could be the real changing of the guard where Osprey's like, okay, now it's officially time for me to go to heavyweight. Maybe you have that match at Dominion and then Osprey declares himself in the G1 Climax. I don't know. It, it's a tough situation. Um, But I think Robbie Eagles could easily pull the upset himself too. Uh, he would be able to ground Osprey. He's done it before. There was a triple threat with Osprey, Eagles, and Cody where Eagles was able to keep Osprey on the ground. And keep it a close match, even though Cody ended up pinning him. Um, Eagles can ground Osprey. If Eric Osprey gets grounded, he's got to figure something out. He does have the um, the decapitator and stormbreaker, but Eagles is somebody who's a little slippery and can get out of that. Uh, night twelve, you look at it. It's night twelve is crapshoot night. Aside from Yo versus Ren Narita, everything's crapshoot. Does Bandito beat Robbie Eagles after Eagles picked up the biggest win of his career at that point against Osprey? Can Osprey bounce back against Douki, who nobody knows anything about? Um, does Chiguchi beat Phantasmo and help me from having a headache of figuring out who's going to win B Block? Please, Taguchi, this is the only time I'm going to ask you for a favor. Please beat Phantasmo so my head doesn't hurt. Um, and then. The most interesting match of night 12, Rocky Romero versus Bushi. Like I said at the beginning, Rocky hates Bushi. I don't know why, but he does. So now the, these two finally get a match against each other. Rocky's going to come out like a bat out of hell, trying everything against Bushi. If Bushi can keep it tranquilo, keep it the Los Ingobernables style, he will be fine. But it's Rocky Romero, and I think Romero has a decent tournament. With B Block, you could put seven name, you could put all the guys in a hat, aside from Will Osprey, and take it, take a name out, and see who finishes second. Well, aside from Osprey and Narita, and you have a valid argument there, except for maybe Dabuki too. So you put, you could put Bendito, Fantasma, Bushi, Eagles, Romero, Yo, and Taguchi's names in a hat. Pick one out, and you have an argument for this person should finish sec finish second. Um, it'll be, it's a tough block to talk about, which is why I'm kind of like a little more laid back because it, it seems like a foregone conclusion that Osprey's winning it, but you get to night 14, Osprey would have 12 points, everybody else would have 10. They would have to hope Taguchi could beat Osprey, which 
I don't think Taguchi can, to be honest, at this point in his career. Taguchi is essentially the next gatekeeper. After this version of Tiger Mask, and to be fair, once Liger hang it up, he's the longest running junior heavyweight at that point. So he would have to be somebody that is kind of like, okay, now I'm going to be the guy that helps put over the young talent and help them understand how this works, which would be very helpful. Um, so you have Osprey go over to Gucci, which would lock up the block because it's tough to even imagine what the order would be. Do you have that be the semi-main? Or do you have the two A-block matches with Dragon Lee and Skrull and then T- uh, Takagi and Ishimori is the final two? Or do you have the B-block one in between? Because if Osprey were to lose that matchup, Bandito and Phantasma technically have a claim. I think in my version... So let, let, let's play hypothetical here. Let's say Taguchi beats Osprey. That would put Osprey at 12 points. Uh, Bandito and Phantasmo get their 12. Phantasmo would have to beat uh, Daguchi to get 12. Um, I'm looking for Bandito versus Phantasmo. For Bandito and Phantasmo, that's like early in the tournament. That's like night two, isn't it? Night one. Fant- or night two, yeah. Phantasma would have the tiebreaker, so Phantasma would win the, the uh, beat block. That would be in- that'd be an interesting situation, but I don't see I don't see it happening. I have Osprey winning the block easily. But night twelve could also offer something interesting, or night fourteen, excuse me, night fourteen could offer something interesting. At that point, Ren Narita would still have zero points. I'm one of the guys who believe in tradition. Uh, the young lion would probably lose all of his matches in the block. But do, does New Japan try something new? Do they break tradition and have Ren and Narita beat Bushi? Which would, to me, signal that, okay, he's definitely ready. And he's going on an excursion as soon as tomorrow. Um, Do I still have that open? I don't have World Tag League open. Because, if I remember right... Uh, Shota Unamo and I think it was Ayato. World Tag League. Let's see here. From not those stupid engine linking. Tro- Stop touching the trophies. Stop it. Oh my god. Down here. Last year. Yeah, last year. Ayato Yoshida. 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 And Shota Unamo finished with zero points. But you look at some of their matches. They won 11 minutes with Tenzan and Kojima. They looked good in a lot of their matches. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you have... Um, you have Narita look just like that. Be very impressive, and maybe he picks up a win against Bushi on the final night. Maybe it's a roll up. Maybe it's something quick. Maybe it's a distraction from Rocky Romero, and Ren Narita is recruited into chaos. It could be something like that. It'd be a very interesting situation, but I I just don't see it happening. I think Bushi gets the win. So the final I have would be Osprey versus uh, Marty Skrull. But let's look at how the blocks would play out. So for a block, it would be Marty Skrull winning the block at fourteen. Shingo Takagi and Taiji Ishimori tied at 13 for second. Dragon Lee taking third at 12. Sho in fourth with 10. Titan with 8. Takamichinoku with 6. Tiger Mask with 6. Excuse me. Jonathan Gresham with 4. And Yoshinobu Kanemaru with 4. This, this makes sense in my head. It makes sense. But to be fair, I can see Skrull, Takagi, Ishimori, and Lee all possibly as winners. I could see a scenario where two of them finish tied and it comes down to, oh, if Shingo beats Ishimori, then Lee advances because he has a tiebreaker over Shingo. But if Ishimori wins, Skrull advances because Skrull has a tiebreaker over Ishimori. That's like how this could work, and it would be a headache to figure it out. So I think they want to keep it simple, especially since they've got a lot of fans now. New Japan wasn't big until... Okay, it wasn't that it wasn't big. 
it wasn't this mainstream, I guess is the better term, until Omega Okada won at Wrestle Kingdom 11. So now they have all these new fans, all these people who are watching New Japan, and this is their this could be their first Best of Super Juniors. This is my second ever one that I'm going to be watching match for match, night for night, hopefully if my schedule works out with that. Um, but you look at it, there's a lot that they don't want to complicate. They want to keep it simple so the fans understand it. And it'd be simple to have Scarl finish with 14, Shingo with 13, Ishimori with 13, and Leak with 12. Or you could change the order. Maybe Lee gets 14, maybe Shingo gets 14, maybe Ishimori gets 14. Maybe we're all wrong and Yoshinobu Kanemaru is going to win the whole tournament. I really hope that's not the case, but who knows. Um, B-Block seems a little more cut and dry. Will Ospreay wins B-Block at 14, Bandido at 12, and Phantasmo at 12, tie for second. Then there's a log jam. Bushi, Robbie Eagles, Rocky Romero, and Yo finish with 10 points each. Uh, Taguchi finishes with 6, Douki with 4, and Ren Narita rounds it out with a big, lovely 0. So you would have the final of Skrull versus Osprey. I personally am taking Skrull. I'm more of a fan of Skrull than I am of Osprey, personally. But also, it comes back to the three things that are basic in life. Death, taxes, and Skrull beats Osprey. It's that simple. And then he can win the title from Lee, and the reign of the villain continues. And who knows, maybe that that's the issue with Skrull. It's like you don't know what his next thing is going to be. Is it all elite wrestling? Does he commit to New Japan? Does he stay with Ring of Honor for a long time? Does he go to WWE? We don't know. And that's annoying, but it's also a hell of a lot of fun. But let's talk about this scenario that I've heard a lot of people talking about. And it's in my head now, which is great. So for those that don't know, at G1 at the G1 special in San Francisco... They had Dragon Lee versus Romu Takahashi for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Romu was defending, and these two have a long-running history of just wanting to beat the ever-loving tar out of each other. In that match, Lee went for one of his uh, signature moves. He has the opponent's legs under his arms. He cups their head against his. It's almost a releasing powerbomb suplex backwards. I don't know the name of it because I don't watch a lot of CMLL or a lot of Dragon Lee outside of New Japan. But uh, the way Hiromu took the bump, he landed flat on his ne- uh, straight on his neck and top in his head. You're supposed to land on it back first. So uh, Hiromu broke his neck. Essentially, he was. Able to finish the match somehow. All you had to do was hit, I think, two moves, and one of them was a time bomb, and win the match. But he had to vacate the title shortly after due to injury. This is how the whole new oh, uh, Lij needs a another junior tag member, another junior heavyweight for junior tag league to go with Bushi, and that's how Shingo Takagi was brought in. But this has been interesting to follow. Romu has been tweeting updates saying like this percent, that percent, this percent, and he's getting close to a hundred from what I hear. I don't speak Japanese. Let's, let's see his most recent tweet. Hopefully it is at least semi-recent. J-I-R, that's a T. Romu. There he is. Uh, his most recent tweet is about Best of the Super Juniors and talking about the matches on night one and the press conference that was today. Apparently Takamichi Noku is sick. Oh, there's a new trophy. That's cool. I'm just now reading her with Takahashi's tweets. This is great. Let's see. He's just retweeting a lot. He, he has so many retweets of Best of the Super Juniors. Where's your own tweet? There's a picture of Bushi with rocks. There's a video of We Made It with him and the rest of the members of LIJ that he knows. There's Naito, Bushi, Sonata, Evil. Oh no, Evil's a cloud. No, Shingo's in there. Evil's a cloud of mist. Okay. 
Excuse me. Bless me. Okay, he hasn't tweeted in a little while. He just has hashtags that are not translated. What does this one say from New Japan itself? Romu. Hiromu Takahashi, yeah, Takahashi's latest diary this week. Why did you get out of the Best of Super Juniors members? Mystery of the Mysteries approaches me. Oh my god, this is this is taking longer than I had anticipated. I apologize. Um, it's interesting. I can't really seem to find anything from him, which is annoying. So there's a scenario people are playing out. People are saying that Dragon Lee wins the best of Super Juniors, and he gets to pick his own opponent at that point. Uh, people are saying he'll pick Hiromu. Or that he... What I, the scenario I would rather see is if Dragon Lee wins best of Super Juniors, or if he doesn't and he's defending the title at Dominion and wins, he wins, and then Hiromu returns, and you set that up for one of the next shows. How you could even set it up for one of the lead-ups to the shows. Where Hiromu wins his title back that he never lost. It's it's a tough situation, and we don't even know if Hiromu's 100% yet. But we have to wait and see. That's one of the fun parts about wrestling. We can just speculate about this stuff. Uh, that is all I've got for today. Um, hopefully uh, this goes well. I'm very excited to start this part of my career with podcasting. And being able to talk about one of the uh, professions I love with pro wrestling. Uh, I'm Ben Herstic, and that was the first episode of Armchair Arm Drag. Please let me know what you thought about it. Um, if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter at ChuroSolider. That is C-H-U-R-R-O-S-O-L-I-D-E-R. And just shoot me a tweet. Tell me what you think about this uh, podcast here. Thank you guys for listening, and I will see you next week for episode number two.